Hey, welcome back to Navigating the Shift. This is Annabelle and Sarah, and it's a lovely day here today, which is quite surprising <laughs> considering the weather we've had, but we'll get to the weather later. Um, let's get started with a little bit of info about war. Now, we talked about war in the last episode, and there is a channel, I think it's on Telegram, because somebody keeps posting it on, my, on Facebook, on my feed, it keeps showing up. But I think it's from a Telegram account called Whiplash347. Has a lot of military movement on that account, including a whole lot of Russian tanks that are on the move in Ukraine and Ooh. Turkey blaming the Assad regime. That's Assad is the guy who leads Syria for a residential attack. Now, whether that's true or not, we can't tell from here, from this distance, but there was an attack on a residential area. Uh, it seems a little weird. Uh, I, to me, it felt like the, the relationships between Turkey and Syria were not so bad, but that it's manufactured is what it felt like to me. So hmm. we'll have to see what happens there. But there seems to be a lot of movement. Uh, British agents that were based in Romania were being moved up to the Ukraine. So it's like they're moving everything up in that direction if they're planning on causing some mayhem up there. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Mm. Well, Syria seems to be in the news because we had our FF event for to push gun control up here mm. Mm. and a Syrian guy opened up fire in a grocery store oh. in Colorado and killed 10 people. So the story goes and turns out he's Syrian. He may have been born there and then just was raised in the U.S. Uh, people aren't really sure. He's a huge Trump hater. hater. He's a huge, hugely religious Muslim guy uh so and it's only 21 but uh, one look part 21. of that you look much older than that yeah right yeah. so a whole lot of media people started tweeting out oh this white man shoots up people again we have to get control and all of that and it turns out he's not just your average white guy he's actually a Muslim from Syria so and now th then they say yes then they yeah. say and they follow up with the next suite of, you know, this what happened there is horrible and we should empathize with the people and the families, but let's not glorify this guy by spreading his name around. Um, like, so we hmm. don't even know what his name is now. Yeah, golly. And, you know, when so you watch obvious. the media, you can you can look out for these things, because when they if they label him as Syrian, are they trying to uh, create hatred towards Syrians? It happens all the time. You've got to look big between the lines and see, well, what, what is it? If we don't even know the name of this guy, so if you've got facial recognition software, you might be able to find him. But otherwise, right. it could be anybody at all. And, okay, well, let's set up so we can hate more Syrians, and then we've got reason to attack them for, for beating the Turkish, you know. So they just set up these whole narratives along the way. We've got to get exactly. past that, past it, past the racism and just unite together. Yeah. So I think it's really interesting that uh, Mr. B, our supposed president, has been uh, been really being such a B for buffoon that people cannot help to notice. You know, I saw a short video of him where he was at a meeting. Media was there. Kamala was sitting to his right. And she says, well, thank you, Mr. President, for your confidence. And he goes. Okay, and he turns back kind of blank faced and turns to somebody and says, who am I handing that off to? And then the guy says, okay, time for the media to leave, time to leave. And they're shouting out, are you going to go down to the border? Are you going to do this? And they just out, 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 out. So it's like they're showing him going. And while they're shooing the media out, he's sitting there like this. Well, with his mask, you know. Just not there. Hello, nobody yeah. home. Yeah, Oops, sorry. So he's sitting there in a mask. He's doing a press conference in a mask. Exactly. Oh, boy. That's the point. So, and his eyes are just blank, and he doesn't seem to be focusing on anything, and he's just sitting there going, uh, pretty blatant. And speaking of the border, there were a bunch of pictures leaked, given out to Project Veritas, of what's really going on inside of those, what do they call them, uh, concentration camps that the Biden administration has them on. and. Uh, it's not good. There's one center, it was for children, and I guess the majority of them are, are older, like up to 18 or 17, I guess. And they're just in these cages, only they're plastic instead of chain. 
and sleeping on the concrete floor with oh. a, like an aluminum plastic blanket like you have for an emergency thing you would keep in your car or something and uh it's it got leaked and it's out everywhere and people are starting to talk about it. the media is starting to talk about it and biden came out and said uh, well we need to get back to the what was it stay stay in place you know the, the way that trump had it we got to fix this you know and then they showed somebody asked kamala are you planning on going into to the border soon and she goes <laughs> Not today. Not today. That hideous fake laugh of hers. And, you know, if, if Trump had done that, you can imagine what would happen. But I think they're really showing who they are. Their acting is pretty darn good out there. Mm. And also the White House. Didn't the White House put out a leaked message about the two of them? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, make sure you don't talk about the Biden administration. It's the Biden-Harris administration. Sure, Interesting. So he won't be around for long, eh? No, no, but they, you know, I think it's going to be the 25th Amendment. They're going to try to get him out. I don't know what will happen between now and then. But the problem is that if Harris was so unpopular before the uh, election in the first place, she people would be outraged if she ends up the president when nobody wanted her in the first place. And who does she pull in as a vice president? So this is where the, the system can be so easily manipulated. There's a, right. um, a system in New Zealand called MMP, I think it was. It's been a long time since I've been there, but I think that's what it was called. And it was set up so that, say you've got parties that you can choose between. So you vote for your local, you know, that party or that party or that party, your lo local representative, but you also vote for the party. So they might be different votes. You know, you might vote for, for the, the, this person, but that party, if you want to. Very confusing. So you end up with these millions of votes. That's weird. Yeah, I think that's how it works. Unless they, it's just looking at the parties. So then they look at the overall votes and they go, okay, if 10% of the votes were for this party, but they only got 3% of the seats, then they have to be given extra seats to make up 10% of total government. Do you see? So if they didn't mm -hmm. win any places because they only got 10% of the vote all over the country, this, the, this system goes, yeah, but 10% of the, of the whole country voted for that party and therefore they should have people in there. And I remember my dad explaining to this to me and I'm listening and I said, okay, I get that, but then who chooses the people that go in there? And he goes, yeah, that's the problem. That is the problem. They, you get all these people going to government that nobody voted for, nobody people's cousins, uh, people's friends. They just pull in these people to make up the extra seats and nobody voted for them. And they wow. don't represent anybody at all. He says, that's a problem. And that system's been going all that time. So I don't know, 30 years or something. Wow, that's, that just seems insane. But you know, it's the way it is in this world. So uh, speaking of getting votes or not, Governor Newsom, I live in California, the recall has gone through. They had more than enough right. signatures, right? And they've been verified. You know, they 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 do ID for a recall thing, but not for voting. Mm. Hmm. But at any rate, <laughs> uh, so there's a radio show I listen to. It's far left talk show, uh, talk radio, three hours every weeknight. This guy's last name is Rothman. And he's so far left. He he's really well educated. He knows his stuff. But I mean, if somebody ever calls in and says, for instance, that thing in Charlottesville, you've got to realize he said this other stuff afterwards. He said, I'm not talking about those people. I'm not talking about the white supremacists and so forth. He just cuts them off and goes, We all heard what he said. You know. <laughs> I heard it with my own ears. Don't try to say he didn't say that. I'm like, oh boy. You know, so at any rate. I've been noticing on a show he's been sort of coming a little bit closer to center and not been quite so aggressive. Oh. And last night he was talking about what's going on with Newsom. So the recall, of course, is going through, but there's this huge scandal going on. So I think California was like 49 ninth place in getting the vaccines out, which is fine with me, but it wasn't handled well. And Newsom decided to hand over the whole thing to a private company, to Blue Shield. Oh, God. So it's like you have a system in place with the government. And he's like, never mind, we'll take that out. We'll give this company the, to start over and take over. And then it comes out. 
they gave a huge amount of money to him for his campaign. Right. So it's, you know, significant conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. And when I was listening to the radio, people calling in were, were saying, you know, I've been trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but from now on, no. This is just really bad. I'm not going to touch that. He got all this money. And he says, yes, I agree. He says, I'm not going to vote to recall him because the Democrat Party says they're not going to put anybody in to run against him. And the Republicans ah. are all weak, he said. So it looks like he's going to be taken out and nobody else in the D's are going to be even running. It's only going to be Republicans. And of course, we all know both sides are bad, but. Um, and I was sort of hoping Richard Grinnell would run, who mm -hmm. is the um, the one who accidentally became national Otis, intelligence. Otis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I think he would be great. He's from here, but um, somebody at Google who works at Google slipped in. It wasn't like a Wikipedia thing. It was from the Google Drive that the president 2021. And it lasted for a few days. A lot of screenshots of it, of course, listed Trump. And then enlisted Biden and then Richard Grinnell. So the, earlier today, our tarot by Janine went and looked at that and she said, wow, it looks like he really is until they can get Mr. T back in place when this all comes out that he's really the one who is running the country and somebody just tried to leak it. Ooh. And it wasn't an, an intention of the alliance, but I think that's really funny. I wish yeah. I kind of wish he could be our, our governor. governor. Maybe, maybe. Maybe when Mr. T steps back in, <laughs> he will uh, come over to California and do us a favor. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So the other thing I saw that's sort of along the same lines is a video of a big general in Myanmar. And mm. what he said was, you know, we had to come in because the elections were messed up. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. But when things have settled down, we've got a new system in place. We're going to have a fair election and we're stepping down. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Oh, you know, that's that's what's going on in this country. Right. They're just right? not telling anybody because it'll it'll set off all the uh, the paid the paid mercenaries that are just, you know, there to destroy the place. Right. So, yeah, you've got to play it slightly differently then. So the president of Tanzania as well has died, died. He's that happened a while ago. Was it? I don't know why that just came around through the media again yeah i remember it, he died it died maybe four or five weeks ago oh he's the guy who tested the poor some poor fruit the yeah and it came back positive came for covid back. yeah that's it another thing very very interesting that was even being reported in the bbc is this enormous enormous container ship in the middle of the suez canal that not only crashed but actually ended up turning sideways and blocking the whole of the suez canal uh, and preventing everybody else from going up and down. Now, see the name on the sign, Evergreen? That is the Secret Service name for H. Clinton. We've talked about that name before. It's popped up in various um, news articles. And uh, here it is again, showing up. So uh, some of these container ships we had heard were shipping live art. Now, according to International Customs, if you have live art in your containers, they are not allowed to be opened and inspected, which makes it absolutely perfect for human trafficking. And so to have this suddenly um, go aground, you might say, and stop all the others going through, means it's absolutely got to be looked into now. And that may open up a can of worms, you might say, in each of those containers. So we'll keep watching to see what happens there. Let's have a look at the weather. So this is kind of interesting. Um, there's rainstorms in Australia. Oh my goodness, flooding like houses underwater, like really serious rain. Wow. Went on and on and on and on and we thought we'd need an arc. <laughs> Not here where I am in, in Sydney, but in the surrounding areas. It just got heavier and heavier. So um, we've had two sunny days now, which is such a lovely relief. But because of all the rain, all the pollution has gone and the sky is like a deep mauvey blue. It's just fantastic. Like it was during lockdown. Just fantastic. Beautiful. I wish it would stay. But of course, once the pollution gets going again, it'll the sky will disappear. We'll sit underneath the cloud. Not forever. Not forever. Not forever. Yeah. We've got to get that free yeah. energy moving. And there's been, because of, I, we're not sure if it's the heavy rains or if it actually happened before that, but there's a huge plague of mice 
running through our state as well. <laughs> and so they, like, no, right, really, like in all the water supply, dying in the water supply, not good stuff, as well as, you know, flying across farms and things. So the, what we're not sure if it's heavy rain or if they've actually come up from the tunnels. That was another suggestion. Oh, yes, that feels true, 100%. I got a ding, ding, ding on my truth meter. Variety. Right. Interesting. Yeah. And for you to have storms like that is not the usual thing. Not at all. Normal, knows. Considering, yeah, considering the enormous fires we had before that. Uh, yeah. So that's been a bit odd. I've been looking at the earthquakes, um, not not religiously, not looking every day, but uh, I noticed they're happening sort of in one island at a time. So I, yeah. I showed some that were in Tonga, then they were in Vanuatu as well, and now they're all gone. So. I can't imagine a natural earthquake happening in one place after the other. The Kermadec Islands, which had so much going on, uh, still seems to have stuff going on a bit there as well. So that might be more natural there. I mean, that's on a turning point of the tectonic plate. That might be something different altogether. Also just noticing this uh, extraordinary volcano with a long name starting with F that I can't pronounce in Iceland. Mm -hmm. That is yeah, just starting to spit out lava. There was somebody I knew who used to follow a blog that had a really detailed reporting system on the volcanoes of Iceland. There is an enormous peak in Iceland that if it blew, and it is not extinct, if it blew, it would affect the whole world. And I'm really hoping that's not 10 days of darkness because it would literally be dark then. Yes. We, we need to send our love to Iceland, I think, to be calm and peaceful. Sounds like a good idea. Well, and then storms we have solar storms mm -hmm. uh G, what did i say it was a g2 yes you did yes if you look at the schumann resonances graph you can see on the left a huge jagged white thing that goes all the way down really wide with sort of jagged edges very um, very specific boundaries isn't it very yes mm. what i've read is the white is like super high frequency yeah and then you get to the 24th uh, th this big black gap here is usually, we assume it's because the gear stops working, whether they stop it for repairs or whatever, but you can see the shape around it, that it might have been some enormous high spike, and that, uh, and that happens quite frequently too, <laughs> that whenever it looks, it looks like it's going to get really big, suddenly they need to do repairs on the equipment, <laughs> the equipment goes, yes. so you can't see these huge spikes. Well, I think it's very interesting that the, the, that really big one that they showed was on the 23rd, which we were talking about something happening. And, and my experience was I, I decided to start learning the Tarot and oh. I bought a book on it. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've hesitated historically because the girl I knew who read them was putting all kinds of bad energy into it and a bunch of history of it. But then, you know, you can take a positive symbol like the swastika and make it negative or, or you can sh switch them back. So I think part of what you need to do as a responsibility as light workers is to start bringing the symbols back to their original meaning. So I got a book and I've been reading it. And um, so I pulled one card. I thought, okay, just give me a reading for the next three months. And I got the six of wands, which is victory. Oh, so I like that. And the other part of it is that there are big forces outside of yourself that are now gathering and working together toward what you desire. The wind is at your back. Mm -hmm. So do you think when you're doing your tarot cards that it must be the same as when you're looking in from a psychic point of view that you must go with open mind and curiosity and not attachment to any particular answer? right because sometimes i watch that i see right. sometimes i see tarot readers and they they really want something to be the answer and sure enough it shows up in the cards whether it's accurate or not so do you do you think that's going to be the same case with the cards like do you yes think, absolutely so when you brought out that card it wasn't because you really wanted victory or did you know what do you think um so what i do is i'll shuffle them until if and with sending the intent that the cards will be deprogrammed of any information they're just going back to neutral and then i don't pull a bunch of them off the top and all of that stuff what i do is i 
I focus on what my question is with as much neutrality as possible. That was a pretty open-ended question. So I didn't have a yeah. huge sort of, you know, it's not like, oh, is John oh, going to back to me? Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> it was just like, what is, what's, what's, what am I going to see in the next three months or experience? And then I'll split the deck wherever it feels right. And then I just kind of close my eyes and, one will go up and so I'll put the other one down and I'll split it again and then one will go up you can't see but one hand will go higher one hand will go lower and I close my eyes so that I'm not visually doing it it's just a feeling thing and then I open to see which one is a little higher and that just boop, 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 and then it was like is this the right card and it was like yes 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 so you know that <laughs> truth o meter inside of me was going that's the card that's the card read it read it read it <laughs> victory excellent yeah, yeah. So it's it's, it's interesting. I, I was doing it partially because I like to be able to see what she's reading, uh, Janine is reading on her tarot channel. And then it just felt like it was time to clean up those symbols, right? Mm -hmm. um, and she did to a reading. Now, this is something interesting. Evidently, I didn't watch it, but this Kim Gauguin, Kim Possible, mm -hmm. did an interview. And she said that Trump is totally self-centered and he just wants to be king of the country. In her reading, she got that there's something had happened. Like uh, Kim is not as important as she thinks she is. You know, she's like, sells herself as the most important person in the world because she has all the codes the and runs the bank, right? She is part of something, but is not as important as she thinks she is. And evidently, according to Janine's reading, she wanted to get involved more with the alliance and something happened between them, perhaps with her specifically with Trump. That was a misunderstanding that led them to not engage with her so much. I uh, And that she was actually trying to draw Trump's attention back to her mm. by doing this, mm. which is a pretty passive aggressive kind of narcissistic thing to do. Or rather childish, really. You think about kids will do that. Yeah. They'll go, nah, yeah. nah, 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 just to poke fun, just to actually get attention back. True. Well, and so what, did we'll you, what did you feel about that reading? Did you feel that that was accurate? Because some of her readings don't feel quite right to me sometimes. Yes. Well, of course, it's all who knows. Um, I think. She, Janine specifically doesn't do a lot of research into stuff. She doesn't want to know. No. She didn't know who she was and, until she, this was sent to her, this um, interview. Mm. That tends to make it a more clean, neutral reading. I mean, sometimes she gets a reading that's totally the opposite of what she expected. Like when, when Trump did that speech and she was like, no, that was him. That was him. And then the reading said, no, that was his double given Somebody, this yeah. particular speech. Yeah. That's so uh, that does happen, but um, I thought I felt pretty accurate. Quite okay. frankly, I've always had a little suspicion about Kim. Yeah, I remember um, one of the last ones she put on Project Speak on YouTube. She was talking with Tank, who is the usual person who interviews her. And she was saying, no more. Well, you know, something's gone. You know, like it suddenly became very serious. And she said, this is war. And Tank went, okay right like he didn't know how to handle it and it felt to me like an empty room it felt no well, not not just because tank couldn't answer it like he couldn't put you know flight of the valkyries <laughs> music in the background to um make it more dramatic uh but he really didn't know what to say but at the same time me watching it, it's like this is like a little person okay it's war like it's not somebody big and powerful saying the words and and it's empty words that's what it felt like in that video i'll see if i can find it again and, and put a link to it you guys can have a look at it as well and see what you think mm. Mm. yes well you and i have been talking about various dreams we've had recently which are telling us to be very discerning somebody can be look like a good guy they can have all the great information be you know have extraterrestrial and seem to have all this stuff but if there's some part of you that goes you know i don't want to engage in this person mm. it, it just i'm not pulled in it's and it's not just a personality thing it's like they're, they're saying what we were talking about earlier was it's like they have re her story Mm. not like they're actually accessing memories of, of things that they've experienced. Yeah, there's some so, brilliant, you know, there are some brilliant storytellers out there, that's for sure. 
So watch out for that. And for me, I call it sending pictures. So when you're recalling a memory, you or telling a story, or I think of it like when I'm mm, doing a guided meditation, I will see the visuals in my mind. I'll report back to people, you do this. And, and I send them the pictures and it's really clear. And I had a friend who I partnered with in a, a series of workshops once and she wouldn't send pictures. She was a, a sincere, honest person, but she didn't send pictures and people's minds, which is, she'd say, and now reach a chord up to, and she had a very bad voice, uh, reach a chord up to the sun and breathe and connect to it. And when she would talk, I would just go, mm, I'd find, you know, study dreaming, thinking about other stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and some people commented that, you know, when Sarah was talking, I can see it all. When the other person is talking, it's it's not it's there. Words. I lose attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that look for that feeling. Are you getting a, a, a are you getting kind of images in your mind of what happened? Mm -hmm. Now people can create stuff that way, but that's one of the ways I show. I'm really visual. So I get all my information visually. So that was, but there's one way. You're not so much visual. You're more of a, a kinetic, right, Annabelle? Um I don't know. I have to go back over my my meditations that I've recorded and, and see what I put in. I'm pretty sure there's a fair bit of visual stuff, but I like to incorporate all the senses if I can. Yeah. While I'm doing well, we, we talked about how it's easy for you to do while you're walking when it's good and typing is good. You know, it's like you have some physical activity True. in your body rather than mm -hmm. sitting still. So if somebody's talking to you and you're not feeling it in your body, that could be a sign that it's a very good story yes yeah the other thing that's interesting we, we're thinking back about these dreams that we've just you know swapped notes on from last night is that with your one you had somebody who has a lot of has a big following but then didn't feel right whereas the one that i had oh, like was, a cult yeah whereas whereas the one that i had was very clearly part of the cult but i felt there was a pathway back to to love for that person so there's a it's it's not so black and white. I get, is this the melting of polarity? You know, is this where you? Yeah. I don't know if that's quite the right term for it, but um, don't assume that one is black or white. You know, um, they people can differ about. They can move about between them because we're all we're only human after all. Um, but also the ones that you think are the most evil, rather than throwing hatred at them and wishing them death, and this kind of stuff to to open up the potential for them to find a way back. Um, and I think that we were, we were told this a long time ago about when we get to this point where the truth is revealed. There are so, so many people that are compromised. You cannot wish death and hatred on every single one of them because there's thousands and thousands of them that you are better to open that potential for them is, is the best thing to do, I think. And then it also saves yourself. You do not want to be throwing hatred at anybody at all, no matter what. Well, if you think of it just as for the best thing for the collective is evidently we agree that we're going to try to get as many savable people to go with us into the new earth as possible. And yeah. if you're throwing a bunch of hatred, you're keeping them locked in to the old earth reality. And Whereas yourself you, as well. Yes, yeah. right. But if it's possible for somebody to flip maybe pay back some of the karma, whatever, break free from the brainwashing, that the, the more of those we can get going, the quicker we're going to get this transformation, the big shift we're all pushing for. Yeah. So it's a good strategy for yourself and for the collective. Yep, I agree. Get rid of that polarity. Hey, there's another thing that's interesting as well, which has got nothing to do with any of the topics that we've been talking about, but it reminds me of something that you told me before. On the 22nd of March, in one of the Australian truce groups, there have been quite a lot of people talking about this huge jet engine noise whooshing overhead like it's something super, super low over the houses, but then there's nothing. Or they'll run outside and they can see nothing. And that reminded wow. me of something that you had similar, where your dog went nuts and your neighbours all came out and none of you could see what it was that made this enormous noise. It's true. It's yeah. interesting. So that was somewhere in Australia. They didn't actually say which cities they were in, but uh, yeah. I and I haven't heard it. But yeah, 
very interesting. Well, I have to admit a little disappointment that more stuff didn't happen on the outside world this on the week. 23rd. As, yeah, <laughs> I will say though, I had dreams and also just my experience was just, I felt so much lighter. I, I felt, oh, I felt victory. I thought, woohoo, I mean, really felt that the oppressive energy has lifted. I've had more energy and more enthusiasm. Uh, and and uh, uh, my desire to create went up significantly. And I know that happened with you too as well, Annabelle. So I think it's coming. Yeah, we're on the right I track. I mean, I know it is. It's inevitable. It is. That is, you keep telling yourself it's inevitable. The light has already won. We're just getting there. Just there's different ways to get there. And sometimes it's a little bit of a detour, but we get back on track. Uh, a lot of the dates that you're given, they might, they, you might not see what it is that's exactly. happening. But uh, yeah, it's all, it's all heading so in the right direction. That makes sense. And the way you can understand this is the spiritual precedes the physical. So the spiritual will shift, but it takes a while before the physical shifts. And the message that I got that made me feel so good was now we're at the physical. The, the spiritual has got, been long enough and the body is starting to shift. And the physical, the, what you see out in the world is going to start shifting really fast. And also our ability to manifest is going up exponentially. So think about your dreams. I was, I ended up looking at property in Northern California mm. and there's this beautiful three bedroom, three bath house and a, a separate barn and five Ooh. acres that are cultivated and 20 acres on the other side of a year round Creek. And the weather's better than where I live now. It gets hotter in the summer, which is good for plants, but um, always cools down in the evening. And I just was like, wow this is it, this is it. And I started fantasizing, you know, getting my kids living there. And, you know, one son does web design, the other one travels, it's near an airport. And uh, the, the daughter-in-law, they're not married, but they live together. She's a school teacher, so she could pretty much work anywhere. Uh, but I just was thinking, oh, when, when, two to three years, okay, we can do it. Uh, and the, the property was like $500,000 less than that. Wow. So. You know, it's possible. I can sell where I live. Right. Boom. There's half of it. And it's so unusual for me to spend time looking at property. Yeah. So where'd the inspiration come for that? Then it's time to manifest the life that you really yeah. want for. Yeah. And that was on the 22nd, which in numerology, the 22 is the ability to take something out of the air, out of the cosmos and manifest it into physical reality. And that's my birthday is a 22. So I carry a lot of that energy. So just, you know, have some fun with it. Oh yeah. That is fantastic. Yeah. I think we should all do that this week. We'll go and imagine. I think so. Something cool for life. Sounds like a plan, ma'am. Very good. All right. That's okay. all I have for today. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.